Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to be doing a home decor tour. And I'm actually gonna be sharing with you five steps into decorating with a neutral color palette. So if this is the kind of look you like for your home and you wanna make some changes, then I really think this video is going to be very helpful because for each of the five steps, we're actually gonna be moving into five different rooms. And I'll be sharing with you some of my tips and strategies, some specific furniture pieces and some decorations. Almost all of the items actually Actually are fairly new and I think they're all still available so I will take the time and I will link everything down below it's gonna take me forever but again I just really want this video to be very helpful for you so without further ado let's just get started with step number one step number one is to get a fresh coat of paint on the walls and I know painting walls is not a fun thing to do but guys I'm telling you it makes the biggest immediate difference in the look of your home like really fast so I highly recommend a neutral color when we first bought this house this whole house was just a Crayola box of rainbow colors it was just too much was going on and we decided to paint the entire house this beautiful shade of gray and I, I recommend the color it's amazing it's repose gray by Sherwin Williams and at our old house we experienced with a lot of grays and beiges and just a lot of different colors honestly and we decided that this repose gray color is by far the best shade out there in my opinion you could go for white I think white is also a very simple color that you can do a lot with but I personally love this shade of gray it's definitely a little bit more on the cool tone um, but with the sunlight and the changes throughout the day it does pull a little bit of warmth but at the same time, it's just a really good neutral gray. So take some time, invest a little bit into some paint, and, and guys, it, just just do this first step. It, it's one of the best steps. <laughs> step number two is to go through your house and actually decide on a few key large furniture pieces to get rid of and replace. So we are gonna move into my bedroom, but I first wanna stay here in my kitchen just to show you this kitchen table that we, we recently replaced. And as you can tell, it does have a gray wood tone. And so that's what I recommend. That's what I recommend you go for. Go for some distressed light wood, white wood, or gray wood. And that's really what I think pulls together the neutral walls. So I love this new kitchen table that I got. It's brand new. Again, I can link it down below. It's kind of like, it's a, it's a a round kitchen table it does have four chairs it's the perfect kitchen table for like a, a breakfast nook area so I love it and I love the color tone and as you can tell up here I did also get this new light fixture for right above the kitchen table again it's brand new and it's very very similar tones it pulls everything together and it gives it a nice fresh look and then right over there we have a coffee bar and as you can tell that is an, a very distressed cabinet um, I love it we just keep our coffee pot there we keep some mugs there and it's a nice little spot we can go to get coffee every morning alrighty so here we are in my bedroom and again I wanted to come in here to show you some key pieces that we that we picked out to kind of pull together this neutral color palette the first being our new entertainment stand so we used to have a black one it was totally not the vibe that we were going for so as you can see this is a much lighter brighter wood tone um, I've actually seen people use this in their dining room as a buffet uh, we actually use it as an entertainment stand and a dresser Josh actually keeps his socks and underwear in there but I love how it has has glass doors so you can kind of hide like the cable box in there the remote still works through the glass it's just a great piece and I love it but let's move on to some other things in this bedroom I actually have a leaning mirror and this is actually in the corner where you know I just I knew something needed to go there but I just wasn't sure what and so if you have any spot in your house where there's just an empty wall but it's missing something I highly suggest a leaning mirror so this is a very large oversized one I check out my outfit fit in it I love it I just have a sitting chair beside there a wicker basket some you know like florally thing beside it I don't know it just like pulls together that corner great and then over here I have my bed and we replaced the headboard and I love it it's just again it's a beigey neutral color but I feel like what really steals the show is actually our new nightstands now I realize I'm showing a lot of new pieces we've had this house almost a year now and it's been kind of like a whole year in the making so don't think I just went out and bought like tons of new stuff all in one day this has been a process but these nightstands are definitely oversized but I love them again the color tone of the wood is perfection so um, I do really recommend the lamps also I will link those because they are kind of life-changing in the fact that they are actually 
pull chains to like you don't have to like reach up in there to turn on the light you can literally like be laying in your bed reach over pull the little chain to turn on and off the light and it's just so easy and then to pull the entire look together around the nightstands I hung mirrors actually right on the wall so shout out to my Texas house on Instagram that's definitely where I saw it I also think Alexandria Garza um, I saw it on hers it looks amazing so just get some nice mirrors put them behind your nightstands and guys your bedroom is looking great. For step number three, we are here in my living room. And for step number three, we're gonna be talking about accent pillows because they're kind of a big deal. They're probably scattered throughout your house more than you realize. And my recommendation for them is a little bit different than what you might do or what you might expect me to say. So I actually recommend going out and replacing your pillows with either a white version or a very light beige color. And I realize most people like to use them as a pop of color. They'll pick their favorite color and use the accent pillows to bring in that that accent color hence accent pillow however I feel that oftentimes accent pillows that are very bright they're a little bit harsh and it brings the eye right into that pillow and it kind of steals the show in, in not the greatest way. I feel like accent pillows need to kind of fade away. They, they'll accent the space, but not overwhelm the space. So I really recommend light pillows and then find other ways to incorporate a little bit of color. And believe it or not, I feel like windows are actually a little underrated. You'd be surprised how much color actually comes from a window and I realize I have a very large window in my living room but I use this technique in all of my other spaces that you know have smaller windows um, but yeah just think about the window and how much color that brings and then also here I have you know some wall art and I incorporated a nice blue color that's a little bit different than than the pillows that everybody tries to, to do with color so let's move on to some other areas in this room that I want to showcase right over here we have two end tables that I highly recommend I I love the style so much. It's, it's light wood, it's distressed, but it really, again, the style is what steals it for me. I love it. Um, we have oversized lamps right here, and then we can't forget the couch. The couch is, is a Chesterfield style. Again, highly recommend it. You can get them several places, uh, but this, this style of a couch really pulls together this whole aesthetic that we're going for. Um, some people might argue and say it's not comfortable, but I personally think it's really comfortable. It's just not crazy plush, but still love it. I've slept there. I really enjoy sitting on it. Um, and then over here we have an entertainment stand and it's very country-esque. It has barn doors on it. I feel like it's just very different than what I typically see and so I did pounce on it. We have a bench here under the window. We have two accent chairs that are beige and then right up here we have um, my mantle above the, the fireplace and we did decorate it very strategically because that does lead me to number four which has to do with greenery. Step number four is incorporating greenery throughout your space and guys this is a great way to incorporate that color that we were just talking about because to me greenery is is such a natural color it's I feel like it's God's color I it, you see it everywhere outside I feel like it breathes life into your home and we are gonna move into the dining room because there's some greenery in there and I completely transformed my dining room I don't think anyone's seen it yet um, but first I just want to show you just some greenery pieces I have here in my living room I have this fig leaf or fiddle leaf tree. I think I got it from Pottery Barn, but it's, it's I'll link it. It's one of the most realistic um, faux plants that I've found. Um, and then up here, we also have some faux plants that I, you know, I decorated my mantle with. But again, greenery is where it's at, but let's, let's move on to the dining room. All right, guys, so here we are in my dining room. This is the newest room that I've completely made over and I love it. I love the way it turned out. As you can tell, it does have the very neutral color palette going on, but I used a a lot of greenery to like I said breathe some life into the space so let me just go over some of the details of the room so first we have the dining room table and this is one of those pieces that I you know I went back and forth it's one of those key pieces that I decided to replace um, and I went back and forth because it's a kind of expensive to buy a dining room table but it's the center of the room and I feel like I just needed something to tie it all together so this is kind of like a farm style or 
farmhouse style dining room table. I love it. The, the tone of wood is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, but then the chandelier also kind of takes the cake too because it's again, kind of like a country style chandelier. It, it actually has little um, wooden beaded things hanging from it. So it's not the typical crystal chandelier. It has that really light wood feeling to it, but yet it has also kind of like a fancy vibe to it too. It's just very, very interesting. Um, you can get them in so many different sizes. I've seen people actually decorate their foyers with it, um, their kitchens with it, but I thought it was perfect here in the dining room. Um, and then I wanna call attention to the, the buffet because most dining rooms do have a good buffet. Um, and I went back and forth about replacing this piece as well because as you can tell, the wood tone is totally against what I keep talking about. But this is a sentimental piece. This was my grandmother's buffet. She loved it, it's solid wood. I remember her like having guests over and she wanted to like bring them into her dining room because she was so proud of this piece. And so it, I just, there's no way that I could get rid of this. I didn't want to, um, you know, paint it or change it in any way. I wanted it to remain sentimental to my grandmother. And you know, all of this decor that I'm talking about today, in 10, 15 years, it's going to be out of style. Um, so I can't change my grandmother's buffet because maybe in 10 or 15 years, however many years, it'll be back in style, but it will always be special to me. So if you have any sentimental pieces, just keep them. Um, I also want to talk about the accent chairs. That's another area of the room I didn't really know what to do with, so I decided to put some accent chairs along with another leaning mirror. It was a space that has vents. It actually um, had some weird like plugs on the wall and I just needed something there. I already had a buffet, so I said, hey, let's do another leaning mirror. And right at the base of it, I have some more greenery that kind of ties in the whole space. I have a, a nice like clock on the wall, some white drapery. So this is my dining room and I am so excited of how it turned out. So here we are in my foyer. So this is the area that you see when you first walk in my home and that leads us to step number five the fifth and final step which is to incorporate white decor so I feel like decor pieces are the items throughout your home that kind of fill in the blank spots and I feel like that can get very cluttery if you don't do it the right way. So the easiest way that I found is to always go for a white shade. And so I'm sure throughout this entire video, in my living room, like on my end tables, my dining room, my bedroom, even here in my foyer, you can tell that there is a lot of white decor pieces. Um, there's still greenery, but the base color is white. And you know, white isn't even necessarily a color. So it, it really helps to you know not look too cluttery, but still have the space very nicely decorated. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, everything will be linked down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. So thank you so much and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.